the rebel flag hoisted over de Balsovo today. And across the day, hundreds of Ukrainian troops have been leaving town, telling stories that speak of just one word, defeat. It was very heavy. We couldn't even go to take food or water. Yes, we were urinating in a can all the time we were sitting in the bunker. Very, very heavy shelling. We were praying all the time and said goodbye to our lives a hundred times. They had really good and heavy artillery. Kiev says it is a tactical withdrawal with heavy weapons, but its president is begging the world to act. Today we've taken new defensive lines, and during my talks with the leaders of the United States of America and the European Union, we demanded a hardline response by the world to the brutal violation of the Minsk agreements by Russia, of the ceasefire regime, and the beginning of withdrawal of the armaments. And we will prepare organized and coordinated actions. The Russian line, this town was already surrounded and thus not part of the Minsk peace deal. Kiev has only itself to blame. We headed north from Donetsk this morning and we were not alone. Days after heavy weapons should have moved back, the rebels were moving forward. Even into the afternoon, pro-Russian rebels firing into Dibaltsevo. As you can see, there's fighting. We're taking positions back from them. Apart from that, everything's fine. Fine is a relative term here. For Vilohursk, like so many other places, tells its own story of the recent days and weeks of fighting. Our house is divided in two. Mine is okay, but my neighbor's is destroyed. Tanks and armored fighting vehicles litter the streets of this town. We're about three miles from Dibaltsevo itself. It's down that road there where the man on the bicycle is going. The intermittent sounds of shelling all morning indicate that the fight for that town is still very much underway. Kiev says tonight around 80% of her forces have left Dibaltsevo. On the streets of Vulihirsk, they've written them a message. The message on the gun barrel reads, send this souvenir to Kiev, to Poroshenko and to their American and European backers. You can't stay long in these places, we needed to leave. But then we met Victor, dragging his coal home. I was born here and I'll die here. Why are you scared? I'm Viktor Sergeyevich. Just tell me, how is your house? Is it intact? Well, thank God it's still there. I've no idea what's next. We live day to day. Wars never made anything beautiful for anyone. First, the children die because they're curious and they're foolish, and then the older people. And Victor, like so many here, has seen that brutal truth proved again before his eyes. So tonight, let nobody be in any doubt whatsoever about it. The Russian rebels and their military backers in Moscow have inflicted a major humiliation upon Kiev, upon Ukraine, upon President Poroshenko, but also upon his and that country's military and political backers, not just in Europe, but in the United States. Where do we go? Only a fool would say. But I'll tell you this, there are an awful lot of young men amongst the rebel ranks who feel they have the momentum, they have the push, they have the energy, they have victory, and they want to go on.